If Sarah Palin previously held the title of most leprously ugly campaign collapsing interview in modern political history this past week, Kamala kicked up her cankles, adjusted her inner ear monitor, and muttered the words, unburden my beer of what has been. Exhausted of Brett. More than 70% of people tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person <laughs> holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and president. I both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people you're the have lever become. Of power. But listen. It's a good sign when your handlers interject and cut the interview short at an uneven 27 minutes shortly after the single cringiest exchange of the night. Am I right? And on the subject of Iran, I am offering what should be an, an important contrast that is presented for folks to make a decision and there are that they feel. Who look at what the administration did and say and think differently. Madam Vice President, they're wrapping me very hard here. I mean, sure, that was uglier than Madonna's 15th facelift, but by way of counterpoint, are you aware she was raised in a middle-class home? I grew up a middle-class kid. I come from the middle class, and I have never forgotten where I come from. Do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle-class kid. We lived in the flats, a beautiful, working-class neighborhood. So I was raised as a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. Um I grew up a middle class kid. And by middle class home, I mean a two story Victorian era Montreal McMansion that today fetches a properly multiple millions of dollars. Of course, that's when she ain't Kaj playing as foghorn leg spread, affecting the least convincing southern drawl this side of Boo Radley, and pontificating about the plight of the working Joe, even if she puts another Joe out of work. This broad has more origin stories than the Joker and sucks almost as bad as the last movie did, but it's a tough sell to craft a relatable narrative about your germinative years when your birth certificate is in multiple choice. And speaking of birthers... The first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called and, the U.S. Citizen, and, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It was and, essentially and so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the... Finish, yes, may, I finish, may I finish responding, but please? Here, but, this, but you have to let me finish, You please. had the White House and the House and the Senate, I'm and they the didn't bring up that bill. I'm in the middle of responding what was a bipartisan effort, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress. Trumpeting the bipartisanship of the U.S. Citizenship Act as if it's a merit in and of itself is like saying, Alien Romulus couldn't have sucked because we all voted to go see it. Look, every ill-advised divorce that ever shattered a happy home was bipartisan. The Iraq War was bipartisan. The entire musical career of Wham! was bipartisan. If a bad thing is bipartisan, the only thing they're sharing is blame, bitch! But this interview is only the latest volley in a fusillade of self-inflicted gunshot wounds for the wine scold in chief and the polls are finally beginning to reflect it look i'm the very last person who's going to tell you to trust a poll particularly one from the likes of nate shilver but this is a familiar phantom of elections past and if it's haunting the kamala campaign this late in the game let's just say you better be stocked up for the summer of love season come election day folks we have officially passed the artificial public opinion inflation phase and entered the pollsters adjusting their predictions immediately ahead of the election so they can continue to have a career phase. We saw this in 2016, 2018, 2020, and 22. Hillary soaring like a helicopter. What, 12, 13, 14 points ahead, only to crater into single digits like a helicopter with Kobe Bryant in it. So if you don't know these words well enough, you can set them to music by condolences on your post-concussive syndrome. While I have nary a doubt the 2024 election is going to have more more fortification than the Maginot line, I'd hasten to remind you of exactly how well that held up against an unbridled blitzkrieg assault. Bros. Broads.
black-pilled pissants. We still need to vote. We very much need to vote in damn droves, might I add. Take two friends, take your family, abduct an indigent and send them into the booth to boof Biden and company. But the fact remains, there is such a thing as too big to rig. Remember, 2020 wasn't decided by a million, billion, bajillion Biden ballots. It was decided by a few thousand ballots in key counties because that's how close the electoral college was. And it ain't like you can conjure those ballots from thin air. It's a ballot, not a U.S. dollar. Even fraudulent votes actually have to belong to real people, people. That's the way fortification always worked. Wait until after election day to see how many votes you actually need. Examine the voter rolls to see who didn't bother to bother. Fill out the unclaimed ballots for the authoritarian arch lich of your choice and have Al Franken's unfunny ass find a box load of them in the trunk of his Yugo. And it's under these tenuous auspices we must view the current collapse of Kuma. Mala. She has the self-same problem John McCain did running against the actively imploding legacy of George W. Bush back in 2008, only on trucker crack on account of she's an active participant in the administration, which is imploding. In short, they thought Biden was too old and too white to win, when in actuality, his avuncular familiarity was the only thing keeping the DNC from going down like the Andrea Doria. She has to run on the same record regardless, but with none of the down-home folksy Joe from Scranton charm he's been pretending to have for 50 years to this day. And so she finds herself in the unenviable position of pawn and offer pinko nonsense as turning the page without mentioning that she's holding the book upside down and backwards. The campaign slogan is a new way forward and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years. So what are you turning the page from? Well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we've been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country. Bitch, 10 years ago, Trump wasn't even a politician, let alone a president. Back in 2014, Obama was answering every criticism of his unctuous administration by slamming down the race card quicker than a coked up Yu-Gi-Oh playing slapjack. And as I've explained until my face is bluer than a 4 a.m. ballot dump, Trump is an inheritor of our partisan declamatory rhetoric, not the generator of it. What do you think was wrapped around that bullet he took to the ear of Valentine? While Wall Street was being occupied by hacky sack and hipsters and five for a dollar V for Vendetta mass back in 20. 13, Donald Trump was up to his stem in season 12 of The Apprentice. But then what would you expect from the vice president of Joe Biden, a man who positioned himself as the one to lower the temperature, the olive branch candidate, who then turned around and jailed his political enemies by the thousands and delivered a Darth Vader speech accusing fully one half of the country of being unironic domestic terrorists. Who's your speechwriter, Janet Reno? On every subject from immigration to Ukraine to Israel, Kimmy Offwhite was functionally clueless and his vacuousness gave way to combativeness and she started to come down with a righteous case of cluster B bitch face. She stopped merely losing the speaking war and lost the optics war as well. Who would have thought you don't know military politics? Policy just because you've entertained more soldiers than Bob Hope. Kamala, you didn't work at McDonald's. You were the belligerent customer the cashier hands off to the manager. And babe, pop a Lunesta and grab 30 winks, would you? I get campaigning is hard, what with all those words in your earpiece, but you are looking rougher than Phil Spector dinner date. In fairness to America's wine taster, it can't be easy to get some shut eye when turning the bedroom light off means shutting the car door. I'm Razor Fist. Godspeed. You, can you that. call Donald Trump um, He's misguided. You say now he's he unstable. unstable. He is unstable, but uh, he's not well. well. You say he's it, mentally not stable. Uh, he's not stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game, that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? 